probably passed by this little cabinet four times at a church rummage sale I went to last month. It's pretty boring, but then I started thinking, it's a great blank canvas for a beautiful art finish. So I brought it home, and today we are going to have some fun with Artisan Enhancements Fine Stone. I'll start by removing these cabinet poles, and then we'll take it from there. This is a beautiful stencil from Artisan Enhancements and I've decided to do kind of a random pattern on the front of the cabinet. So I went ahead and just taped it in place, being careful not to um, place the stencil to where the, where the poles are going to go. It's going to be covered with fine stone. We don't want to do that. I'm using my Artisan Enhancements color shaper here to smooth the fine stone over the stencil. As soon as you've got it covered, you're going to go ahead and lift it off. Don't wait for it to dry. This is the ooh, ah moment. Beautiful. this little cabinet taking shape. I like where it's going so far and as soon as the product has dried I'm going to go ahead and paint the whole piece a solid color and then we'll come back tomorrow and do some more fun finishes on it. So as you can see I've painted the cabinet in a light gray and I'm going to go back and apply my stencil again like I did here and add a little bit of black to the stencil design before we go any further. Enhancements Crackle Tex is a fun and very versatile product. This will not only give me a great crackle, but the ability to lift off a top layer of paint that I'm going to apply after this. We get the illusion of an old world rustic finish with the raised stencil kind of in the background and another layer of paint chipping and fading away. As soon as my paint is dry, I can go ahead and apply the crackle text and then we'll wait for the product to dry before we apply another layer of paint. So you can see I'm gonna, just going to go every which way with it. You'll get a different type of crackle depending on uh, which direction you apply the crackle text and then which direction you apply the paint over top. So I'm going to go every which way with 
the crackle text and the paint. And that will give me um, a more varied crackle. You don't want to apply it too thin or you may not get any crackle at all. It needs to be fairly thick. Obviously, I don't want it dripping down my cabinet, but um, thick enough that you can see it on there. going to apply the white paint fairly quickly over the dry crackle text because if I start going back and forth too much I will reactivate the crackle text. It will get kind of gummy under the paint and make it hard to brush on. The crackles will start appearing very quickly really doesn't take long to take effect but I do want to uh, paint very thickly fairly thickly so we get some good crackle in there I'm not worrying about perfect coverage here though because I'm gonna come back and do quite a bit of distressing stop here and just work on this one side for now because it's drying and activating so quickly and I want to make sure that I have a chance to lift off uh, the white paint where I want to lift it off before it dries too much. So I wanted to bring you in a little bit closer here so you can see I've got some great crackle happening right in here. I'm going to use a damp rag and you can use a sponge, a baby wipe even works pretty well, but I'm going to go ahead and just start pulling back some of this white paint and you can see I got some great texture where I'm pulling it back. I'm getting some really nice texture from the crackle text that's going to give that illusion of chippy paint. I'm going to take off quite a bit, especially around the design, so let me accentuate that. This is really the fun part. This is where you really get to get creative and think about how a piece might weather over time. Imagine the history of it, where it started. Sometimes I'll do kind of a dragging motion to take off some of that paint. Other times just push down and lift off. And see the great texture we're getting in here. That chippiness, that chippy effect. Really nice and weather. And I'm really liking the crackle that I'm getting right here, so I think I'm going to leave that alone, but maybe take some more of it off here. I want it to look very natural. I'm going to use a clean part of the cloth and take some of that paint off. drying so quickly, you really have to kind of work fast. I'm glad I decided to stop and work on this side before I painted the other side. 
because I think by the time I got over here, it would be too dry to do much of anything with. I better make sure I take some of this off. I'm loving where this is at right now. I could take it a few steps further and maybe do some leaf and foil size and some silver foil. That would be really pretty. I could also mix up a custom scumble glaze with Artisan Enhancement Scumble and maybe some graphite. That would be fun. But I like it how it is. I like the softness of it. I think it has a very um, kind of French or maybe Scandinavian old world look to it. So I'm going to stop here. It does need to be sealed. and. I'm going to go ahead and use Artisan Enhancements Clear Top Coat Sealer, which will give me a durable matte finish. Give it a good little shake here. This sealer is so easy to apply. In fact, I really love it um, for doing the interiors of things too. So fast and easy. Now you want to go ahead and um, definitely use a good quality top coat brush. This top coat brush by Artisan Enhancements was designed to apply a nice, thin, even application of sealer. Now this sealer dries clear. You can see I, I just used what was on the lid here. It's going to go a long ways. You really want to apply a very thin coat. Thin, even coat. Without going over it too much. I really don't want too much on my brush. You can see very little is needed here. You don't want it drippy. It's a little bit tricky getting around these raised designs. You want to make sure that the product isn't pooling at all around the raised design. So just pay attention to that. If you see some pooling, come back and lift it off with your brush. And this, product, this product dries very quickly, which is nice, but we are going to wait um, 24 hours before applying a second coat. I love also that the sealer is exterior grade. So really, this piece could be used outside. I think it'd be so cute on a patio next to your lounge chair. So tomorrow, I'll come back and apply a second coat of Clear Top Coat Sealer. I'll find some new knobs for the doors and I think we're done.